Welcome to the first episode of Series 35 and of 2021, everyone! Mm -hmm. 2020 is over! We made it! I I always want to say nowhere to go but up, but then I'm like, "Mm, bet I can find a way. (laughs) Don't tempt it. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) Uh, However, what a great series we have lined up for you. Mm -hmm. We have Jeff Stormer joining us to go over his new game, Anyone Can Wear the Mask. Mm Mm-hmm. Is a series you don't want to miss. Jeff is always a delight. This is the second time he's been on the show, and both yeah. times I laughed so hard. Um, Jeff's amazing. Mm. So please stay for that. But first, announcements. First up, after a couple weeks break from my Chimera stream, A Tale of Twinkle and Awe, uh, we'll be returning this Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, where we are introducing Eldritch Horror to our magical girl superhero fantasy world. Uh, this will add new rules and new moves to the game for a few sessions. And we're going to be pushing into some of the fears of my players while maintaining a safe environment by utilizing safety tools. Uh, so it'll be a fun time. Uh, and you can join us at twitch.chimera.games and see what sort of fun our heroes get into. That'll be creepy. Yeah, Exciting. it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, last year at the end of 2019, so I guess not really last year, but you know what I mean. Uh, we enough. took a quick moment to talk about our hopes for the upcoming year, mm-hmm. the things that we had accomplished the previous year. Uh 2020 was a weird year, but I want to go ahead and take a moment to do that this year, too, Mm. even though it didn't go how we wanted to. No. Um, Things still got done somehow, and there was was still some forward momentum. When I looked back at it, I was surprised, actually, Mm -hmm. uh, at how much had happened. So I would like to state my goals. I don't really believe in resolutions, but I'm going to put it out there and just say, like, these are the things that I would I would like to work on. Yeah. Uh, I want to continue doing more podcasting stuff. Obviously, I fully intend to keep going with Character Creation Cast. Mm -hmm. We are going into year... Three? three? No, it's been year four. Year four? I don't even know. Year four starts in April, yeah. It's my child, and I don't know how old it is. (laughs) Uh, Just just today was the three-year anniversary of the idea sprouting into a solid idea. And a name. And so that is three years then. Yeah, it's been three years exactly. So we're okay. so we are currently in year four of uh, <sighs> when we started planning this. Wow, we've come so far. It grows up so fast. I know. <laughs> uh, so obviously, I fully plan to keep going with that. Um, I want to keep working on other podcast projects too. Um, for almost all of 2020, we didn't release any of Garbage of the Five Rings mm-hmm. um, because we had to take a break for s- some, you know, health sanity reasons of our hosts Mm -hmm. we're finally at a point where we're starting to talk about how we can bring that back in a way that is sustainable for both of us yeah um so i'm really looking forward to getting back to work on that a little bit um i'm also very excited about a new show that i've been kind of quietly working on with ali grower Mm -hmm. of welcome to warda and careers call um, she and I are working on a podcast about the American Girl books and dolls. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have an exact start date yet. We were kind of hoping to get there at the beginning of this year, but then uh, holiday shipping made getting the books back and forth really difficult. <laughs> um, but you can look forward to Book Doll Podcast uh, sometime in 2021. And I'm very, very excited about it. Yeah, that About doing a, a non-gaming thing, too. Yeah. Should be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to keep working on some more game design stuff. We got to do a little bit over the course of last year. It's kind of a, a slow and steady slog. Um, and honestly, I've come to the realization that even if that game never sees a table, it's been a really good mental exercise for mm-hmm. me that I've enjoyed doing and a project that I've enjoyed doing with a friend. And I think that that's totally worth it. Yeah. And I'm trying to like recognize that more that mm-hmm. like, just because I don't end with a finished product in my hands that somebody else sees, doesn't mean that that work didn't happen or wasn't worthwhile. Exactly. Um, but definitely still want to keep working toward that. Mm-hmm. And then last year, uh, the biggest thing for me was to be well. Um, Mm -hmm. My mental health had been really bad the whole year before. Um, I spent most of last year 
significantly struggling with it. It was last year was the worst year by far for mm-hmm. me. However, in the last month or so, I have started a new medication and really turned a corner. Yeah. Um, I am feeling the best I have felt in probably almost a decade. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I'm really hoping that I can keep going forward with that. Like yeah. anything else that happens in this year would be a cherry on top to like feeling like a sane, competent, healthy human. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What about you, Ryan? Uh, yeah, for me, uh, yeah, last year definitely didn't go as planned, uh, just no. like for everybody. Um, <laughs> but for 2021, um, I think one of the biggest things that I want to do in 2021 is do more streaming. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I'm finding it to be very fun to do. Yeah. You seem to really be enjoying it. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like not only the, the, in the moment stream stuff, but like the behind the scenes stuff, like making the OBS dashboards and, mm-hmm. and the, uh, uh, all the overlays and, and changing things up. And, uh, like if you tune in this Friday, you'll see the, the overlay has completely changed because we're in the horror portion so everything got darker and like all all the the cool vines that we have around everybody's videos have wilted and turned blood red it's pretty sweet Fancy. Uh, yeah so it's uh it's it's cool what you can do uh with a little bit of photoshopping and 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 whatnot so uh no i'm, I'm really excited for that i i want to do some more streaming i want to do some like maybe some sound design streams um maybe some more just one shots with people Mm-hmm. Um, maybe some uh, more Chimera playtesting as well. Uh, so we'll see. Um, I know for A Tale of Twinkle and Awe, um, everyone that's currently playing right now had signed up for 10 plus sessions and we're going into session five this coming Friday, I believe it is. Um, so so we'll see where that goes. Uh, yeah. Not sure how long the campaign will last. We're going to go until the story is done or until people say, all right, um, I got too busy. Yeah, uh, but, <laughs> uh, but the the group of players that I have is, are fantastic. So um, I'm really excited to see where where everything ends up. Um, another thing that I'm really looking forward to is releasing more micro RPGs. Um, so another game design uh, thing. But um, I have one waiting in the wings right now. Um, I wrote a game for B Zelda from the Broadswords uh, for Christmas. Um, about uh bees you play bees that are also magical girls on vacation uh so and and you you do bee things uh but you're sentient magical girl bees so it's uh just kind of a, a fun little uh thing that you can you can roll up your characters in five minutes or so and play a two-hour session and, and tell a a fun you know magical girl and bee centric story which is fun Mm -hmm. um so uh, look forward to that uh but then i have i created a a dice system for it that i haven't seen anywhere else um that i'm going to be applying to different games as well so it'll be all under like this this umbrella that i'm calling uh what is it powered by the hive uh so it's pbth (laughs) <laughs> uh, which I thought was fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it should be a lot of fun. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and, I, and I hope I can get to them because I've been quite busy with all sorts of other things. End of year stuff at work has been uh, extraordinarily busy. Um, so I'm hoping that might, uh, you know, die down a little bit so I can have a little bit of breathing room. Um, yeah. Uh, other things. I want to see friends in person again. Yeah. That's that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I miss Goodness. people. I miss I, people. Like I, I only ever see them like twice a year. Yeah. And like I just it was hard. It was very hard. Um and like we we went over to my my best friend's house. We didn't go inside. We just stood outside his door, masked up, uh talked for a little bit. Um and, and it was always to like here's some presents or here's some yeah. cake or whatever. Um, and, and I miss hanging out. I miss hanging out and doing fun stuff and, and everything. Um, you know, Gen Con might be a bust this year. It's like right at that time period that could be potentially maybe safe, 
but the yeah. amount of people that are, that normally attend might make it not so. Uh, but almost certainly, maybe by November, a catacon uh, would be a, a much safer bet uh, for people to get together this year. And um, goodness, I, I really hope that can happen for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Oh, uh, and the last thing, last goal I have is, uh, getting better at sound design. Um, mm -hmm. I, my skills have like grown almost exponentially within the last few months alone. Uh, the Ahura Borealis crew has been keeping me on my toes, uh, with their new adapt adaptation of Stephen King's It, um, with their Losers, a love story. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's been pushing my my skills to the next level basically yeah um like the the amount of like really intense stuff I get to do in that show is uh is really like just mind-boggling uh so I'm really excited to see where I can go for uh, this year and see where I'm gonna be at the end of the year I think the thing that I didn't say in mind too is that like I want to play more games I went and mm -hmm. looked back at what I've played this year. Oh yeah. And it's been like nothing. Hardly anything. Like I've 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 finally like I'm playing in a campaign with yeah. friends. So I'm very excited about that because for years I was only doing one shots mm -hmm. um, and I prefer campaigns. It's just my preferred play style. Yeah. Um but the new games that I try generally are at conventions and having not gone to conventions, I didn't do a lot of that. So I think when I looked back at it, L5R might have been the only game I played in 2020. Yeah. Um, which would be a bummer. So hopefully try try some new games. Friends yeah, call I me. The... I think actually next week um, or this week. What day is it? Uh, <laughs> in a couple days, actually, I think we're going to try and play Anyone Can Wear the Mask, actually. I'm oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. I think after the series is done releasing, um, my my friend uh, in town he listens uh, every week when we release, which uh, just kind of warms my heart a bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I know he's going to listen to this one, and I want to play it after he listens mm -hmm. uh, because I think that'll that'll get us the most uh, you know the most out of it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm really excited to play that as well. Okay. Well. Before we, uh, you know, use too much of people's time, before anyone's <laughs> interested in listening to this episode. Um, last thing, we wanted to remind everybody that we are in need of more reviews. Mm -hmm. We have one for this week and one for next week. After that, we have nothing. No, just, just one for this week, I think. Oh, I thought this is it. We have one more. You said we have one more after this episode. One oh, more. Oh, after this. For... I see. We're reading it after the episode. Yeah. Okay. I see. So just this one. Then we're done. Yeah. Yikes. Um, so please, if you hear this, um, if you've made it this far and you're still with us and you haven't turned off the episode, <laughs> please <laughs> leave us a review. Even if that review is like, maybe talk less. Um. <laughs> yeah. Just, just give us five stars and we'll take whatever yes. advice you have to heart. Yeah. If you Here's the thing. If you rate us five stars and then are like, they talk too much, we'll still read that. It just needs to have five stars. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you can say whatever you want as long as you leave five stars. <laughs> and it's and it's work appropriate. Okay, right. Yeah, and it's uh, <laughs> yeah, no language. Um so if you like what you hear this series, whether you are new or have been here since the start, please go ahead and leave us a review. We would love to read it. Absolutely. Uh for now, uh thank you for sticking with us in this long cold opening. Uh, let's get excited for the start of one of my favorite series to date and get to the episode with Jeff Stormer. It's a great one. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. 
I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome back Jeff Stormer, designer of the game we are covering today, Anyone Can Wear the Mask, a storytelling game about a hero, a villain, and their city. Jeff, welcome to Cre- Character Creation Cast again. We're really excited to have you back. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. This is going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It's been, honestly, a while since you were on Character Evolution Cast with us. Um, so let's start by reintroducing you to everybody. Can you tell us about yourself, the projects you're involved in, aside from this one, where people can find you? Yeah, of course. Um, my name is Jeff Stormer. I am a podcaster, game designer, and the unofficial official LARP designer of the Olive Garden Restaurant. Yes. Um, I am the host of Party <laughs> of One, which is an actual play podcast focused on two-player role-playing experiences. I am a co-host of All My Fantasy Children, which is a character creation, storytelling, and world-building podcast on the OneShot Network. I am also the host of Talking Nog, which is the world's foremost authority on eggnog and eggnog-related issues. <laughs> Um, and, and also, it's I am time making... for that one. Well, actually, by it the is. time this comes out, I suppose it will be past time for that. You, but... you will you will be able to hear Talking Nog 2K20 on the Talking Nog podcast feed, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> which you can find at bit.ly slash Talking Nog, since I think I have to transfer hosting services because I think I'm out of SoundCloud space. Oh, and I actively refuse to pay any money for Talking Nog because <laughs> why? Because that is against the spirit of what I am doing here. <laughs> um, and also I am a game designer, including the game that we are playing today. Anyone can wear the mask. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get into this. And we're going to start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game. All right. Uh, so what sort of setting are we talking about, uh, for anyone can wear the mask? What this, what is this game uh, about in a, in a nutshell? Uh, this is a game about superheroes. It is a game about a superhero, a supervillain in the city that they share. It is a game about uh, superhero narratives in the vein of Superman or Spider-Man or Batman that are very specifically tied around here is a hero and here is the city that they protect and the people in this city that look up to them and the sort of relationship that we that they have and the kind of relationship that the hero and villain have against one another. And it's it's really it is more than anything. It is like the game. The setting uh, is my love letter to Superman because it is about a hero that always saves the day Mm -hmm. and what happens when they can't save everyone along the way. Mm. And that sort of experience of of coming back stronger because you're you're overcoming the failures that you've had along the way. That's awesome. I'm I'm really excited about this. I've been like kind of yeah. watching as you've been working on this for a while, hasn't it been? Like it's been I don't know, like I s- is it a six year? to eight months, I think. I think okay. I started it in like I started, I think maybe over either over the summer or in the spring. I started it in quarantine. Like it was okay. this has been a quarantine project. And now okay. like so it's been somewhere between like six and eight months of like this has been the thing that I've been working on. Yeah, I've been just like watching your tweets and stuff about it as it like, like, oh, here's an idea. Like, oh, I, f- I figured this part out. It's always fun <laughs> to watch people like kind of do those things out loud. I get really excited as I follow along with things I, like that. And I, I do like, too, oh, it's coming is, together. <laughs> I get I get the same way, which is why, honestly, the reason that I really started doing it, because like I enjoy seeing it when other people share it. And also I've heard people talk about. Uh, I've heard new designers talk about like it is a helpful thing to hear people go through the process, especially people who have been through it before. And like because it, it, it shows that a like it's a process and you get to like watch what people work on and the ways that they work on things. And also it shows that like it can be easy for a new designer uh, to to see projects and to feel like they appear you know, fully formed into the world and as if they have been handed to us from on high. And it is a very like encouraging thing for someone who is new or who is figuring out if this is something that they want to pursue to see that, oh, yeah, we all just like mess on. I We all like mess with ideas and, you know, bang on concepts. And sometimes we drop projects and sometimes we we, we swing over our weight class and like it, it it's a it's a it's a. It's a process to see that happen. And I think it's important to kind of open that door and show people the how the sausage is made because it's going to lead to more people making sausage. 
Oh, yeah. Well, I know from my own experience of like trying to kind of make a game is like my design partner and I will sit down and we will talk and talk and talk and talk for two hours. And then we'll be like, wait, did we end up exactly where we started? And it's like, yes, we did. (laughs) We just like we went in circles and it's like we could do this and we could do this. Or it's like, oh, what if we did that? Wait, no, that's the thing that we were originally going to do anyway. (laughs) And then feeling Mm -hmm. sort of like bummed about it of like did am I even getting anything done and so it's been really nice to watch you do that we watched the Descent into Midnight team do that Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. I watched Alex Roberts do that when she was working on Starcrossed Mm -hmm. um kind of just you know have those like conversations out loud has been really helpful to know that it's like somebody didn't just wake up and like have this shower thought in the morning of like a brilliant fully designed game like, mm-hmm. Right. Mentally, I know that, but being able to see that has been it's, really, really it's, helpful. I, that's that's exactly it. It's it's really powerful to see that. So often, the things we work on, like there's 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 sweat and there's tears put into them, and seeing that, like, I think it makes it more valuable for me. Mm-hmm. Like it, like yeah. it makes it it makes it so that when I see the thing and it's available and it's a done thing, that I can go, wow, this is something that I know this person like sweated on. And like it's something that they've put a lot of themselves into, and you know that adds a that adds its own kind of value to a project. Yeah, well, I absolutely. think from like a marketing standpoint too, that like by the time that thing comes out, I'm so excited for it because yeah. I've seen how it's you know like the thought that's been put into it, and like mm-hmm. have been watching the, this like cool piece here and there, and, yeah. and then like it was like oh now all of these things have come together, and now I have to have it. So hundred sure. percent. <laughs> Back to the actual questions on the outline. <laughs> what kind of things do we need to play this game? Uh, so the things that we need to play this game, um, there are three player roles in this game, and each of those roles interacts with a different uh, component of the game. So uh, the person playing our villain is going to need a handful of six sided dice, probably in like the, no more than like three to five. But I, I won't I won't tell you how many dice to bring to a game session. Uh, The player playing our city, and we'll explain what all three of these terms mean uh, once we kind of get into things. The player playing the city is going to need a deck of playing cards, and the the player uh, player taking on the role of the hero is going to need a journal or some writing implements or uh, things that they can draw on and write with. This can be a notepad program. This can be a journal. They need some things, some documentation tools. Mm. And and because we're doing this on a podcast, the podcast sort of becomes our documentation tool. Yeah, but true. Uh, when when you're playing it like off mic, like with a table of people, like the player taking on the role of the hero will have like a journal or some pens and paper in front of them to kind of like be mapping things out. Mm-hmm. And I think it's worth noting that this is a one to three player game as well. Oh, yeah, um, you can. The, the game is light enough that you could play all three of these roles yourself and just, yeah. you know. At each of the each of the and just do all the all of the things at the same time. And we've also worked out how to do it with two players because I it's my brand and I have to stick to that brand. I was going to say, if you can't make a two player game, Jeff, I don't know who can. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you say that, but I also made Mission Accomplished, which is you cannot play with less than four players. So that was a, a failing on my part. Like I sat down, I was like, all right, what's the two player version of this game? Well, that doesn't work at all. It's no. actually just right, a special then. double episode of the podcast where we have four people. Yeah, it, <laughs> that's, ended, that's what, exactly what we ended up doing was I released an episode and I was like, this isn't our normal format, y'all. I don't know what to tell you. We couldn't do it. <laughs> people that's keep amazing. asking me, people keep asking me in interviews, what's a game that you would love to play with two players that simply can't be done? And every time I have to hang my head and be like, <laughs> my own game, it's the one that I wrote. It's the <laughs> one that I, I made. You say, you know what? I just really wanted like a change of pace, so I decided to write one that it was couldn't a be played it was a, that way. It was, it was, a, it was a, a design challenge for, for myself. Really? Yeah, you, you gotta you just know, really spin it around, Joe. <laughs> just, just Fair. take uh, like take the whose line is it anyway approach and get uh, a whole bunch of like things that happened from the audience, and then now now you can just play it two players. See. 
I I don't want to go down an entire <laughs> rabbit hole, but I I can singularly debunk that. But I don't think it's on the topic of this episode. <laughs> <I know. laughs> we 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 don't need an entire other half hour segment where I dig into the gears of of my own frustrations uh-huh. at not being able to play Mission Accomplished with two people. We can do it. We can do a separate Mission Accomplished episode sometime. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm down with this. Mm-hmm. It's also a game that I think would be fun for character creation cast. Absolutely. But that's neither it, here nor there. It is fantastic. Um, all right. What kind of stories and themes is this game, Anyone Can Wear the Mask, uh, meant to explore? So we kind of already mentioned, I, I mentioned the the kind of stuff about being a hero and saving the day and the idea that, uh, and so what I want to emphasize here is like kind of the, uh, what I would describe as the fundamental truth of the game. Because there's one fundamental like fact about the game, which is sort of unshakable. Mm -hmm. And wherever you set the game, whatever characters you make for the game, this is the thing that is always true. The hero will succeed at the end of every issue. It's never a question of will the hero save the day or not, because the answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. That was a a design decision we carried over from the game. The game is based on Beyond the Rift by D. Pennyway. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but. Uh, that is a, a fundamental truth of the game, because to me, like it, the reason that I that that is so important to the game is because the game is not about that aspect of it, because a lot of ways, like I said, this is my Superman game. And yeah, this is this is a game where, yeah, we know the hero is going to win. That's not where the drama comes from. The drama comes from can the hero save everyone and how do they how do they continue being a hero when the answer to that question is no. Mm-hmm. So it, mm-hmm. it's. It is you're always it is going to be uh, the the themes of the game are you're always you're going to have a hero that always wins, but maybe can't save everyone. Things will go wrong along the way. They are eventually going to fight a a villain, the the one person stronger than them. And we're going to see what happens when that unflappable hero fights the one thing that they can't save the day against. And we're going to and we're going to see we're going to get the catharsis of that hero is going to come back stronger and save the day and and you know, make right what they couldn't make right before. Okay. And then the other key part, the other key theme is the relationship between like a city and the hero that it looks up to. We're going to create a place that values this hero and we're going to create a group of people that want this hero to succeed. And it's about, you know, supporting the people in, in one's life that you want to, to it's, it it's, it's about creating a relationship of mutual support. It's a game about mutual aid, I guess, is how I would describe it, because it's a game about we support you when you need it and you support us when when we need it. And it is a game about protecting one another, often with a subtext of because people in power might not always protect us. Mm-hmm. One of the questions we always ask is what do characters do in this game. And I think in most superhero games, like in masks or something like that, it's pretty mm-hmm. clear. Like you're you're fighting evil, you're being a superhero, you're, you know. But this is I feel like a little bit more complicated because like I mean, if you are the city, like mm-hmm. what are you actively doing in this game? You know? Got it. Like yeah. if you're the villain, how are you interacting also with the city? Like how do those three pieces kind of Got fit it. together? Got it. Got it. Got it. That that is. Thank you. That is a great question, because I think like we were kind of I could talk about what they all kind of do thematically. But I think this is a great kind of opportunity to talk about it on a mechanical level, because I think Mm. there's some interesting things that kind of also expand out to the themes that we were just talking about. Um, So the three things that each player does is um, we'll start with the hero. Um, What the hero does is in capital letters, save the day. Um, (laughs) The uh, actually, actually, even more so than that, I think that is the important thing to lead with, because like what characters do in this game is create scenarios for the superhero to save the day. But um, we'll kind of walk through an average uh, like turn or round or like play cycle of the game, because I think you'll you'll we can kind of elaborate from it from there. Uh, So we start with the city. Each turn starts with the city flipping a playing card, the standard 52 deck of cards. You can cut it to certain numbers if you want the game to run a certain number of time. But uh, the city flips a playing card based on the first thing that happens is based on the suit of that playing card. The city uh, plays their role and introduces a part of the city and some people in that city. 
Um, the city tends to be broken up into sort of four districts, neighborhoods, boroughs, however you want to define it. Uh, but they they introduce a place and, and people who live in that place. So turn by turn, you you quite literally flesh out like this, the, the city and the people inside of it. Then play moves over to the villain who looks at the number that is on that card and says, OK, here's how these people are in danger. Here is the the threat that has befallen these characters. You know, you you know, the city creates our neighborhood diner and the, the people that live in it. The villain says, and now there's a super villain robbing this diner. Mm. The villain then rolls a six sided dice or multiple six sided dice and picks the highest result. And 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 in that result, tells the hero what happens as they save the day. Either they save the day, they save the day and become like an icon to the city. Right. They have a big hero moment. They cause damage or get hurt or they or someone dies or is lost or turns evil or however you kind of want to define you lose someone. Mm -hmm. But the idea is like the, the villain rolls the dice and prompts the hero to say, how does the what does this look like? What is your hero moment under the context of you are either going to get hurt or something in the city is going to be profoundly damaged? Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, then the hero saves the day. The hero, you know, uh, has their kind of journal and they can kind of write down the names of the people that they save. They draw out their little section of the city. They start building out their kind of map of what the city looks like to them. And they describe, OK, I save the day by doing this, this and this. I have this power that I will use in this context. And this is how I save the day. And here's what gets broken along the way. And so that is sort of the core turn. There are a few exceptions to that, which are like face cards change the game a little bit because they introduce other prominent non-player or non-player character. They introduce other prominent named characters. Mm hmm. So like if you flip a queen, that is someone that is connected to the hero's life behind the mask. So there's some, uh, so the turn order changes when you flip a face card. Oh, OK. But like the, that that is sort of the general flow of the game is the city introduces a place. The villain threatens that place and the hero saves the day. Hmm. And then there are two jokers. The joker, when you flip that, is when we get to. Watch there the the big villain emerge and the nemesis sort of defeat the hero and the low point of the of the emotional journey. That's when Darkseid shows up and blows up Metropolis and Superman's yeah. not quite strong enough to stop him. <laughs> and then when we flip the second Joker, that's when we have our uprising and the hero comes back stronger and saves the day. So it is a game that has that very specific superhero narrative baked into the gameplay mechanics. The, oh, I'm really that excited just, for this. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, I love superheroes is the thing. I love yeah. them so much. Do and, you, and I, Jeff? It sounds like you don't know anything about them at all, actually. That's, that you know what? Like, uh, this is this is a moment that I get to drop my favorite fact about myself. I went to school for this. Yeah. This is this is my this is my 10 years later college thesis. <laughs> Wait, really? No, hold on. Go back to that. What? I so I have an English degree, but my English degree like concentration is literally in comic books. And mm -hmm. most of that study was around like superheroes. I went to Ohio State where I went to school has what is I believe it's either the only or it's the first comic book research library in the world. Wow. So like it and it opened when I started going there, like my first year was like the year that they had kind of opened it to the student body. So this was what I That's like so within cool. my English degree, like I majored yeah. in comic books and superheroes. And so gosh, I this, love the like niche things that like people can focus on in college. My, like it, you're like, this is the like little area that I know so much about. Like, I don't know. That always fascinates I, me. It it fills me it fills me with joy. The times when I get to like like pull out this ace card in my back pocket, it's my favorite thing. And this game really is like a summation of the kind of superhero tropes and lore and sort of like folklore iconography and themes that like really speak to me. It's why I keep coming back to superheroes and more specifically, it is it's why I keep coming back to Superman specifically. Mm -hmm. This game is my this game is my rebuttal to the argument that Superman is boring because he's too powerful <laughs> and he's always going to win. This game is my answer to that question. Yeah. 
That's oh, incredible. Goodness. Yeah. I love that you're like, I will put those student loans to use and I will I'm, prove I'm to it. you. <laughs> yeah, doing it. Seriously. <laughs> this. Oh my goodness. Do not add, do not tell me that Superman is boring. I will make a game to disprove that to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate flex, really. It's like, let me just make an entire product to prove you wrong. Yep. <laughs> Six months ago, someone said that to me and I cracked my knuckles and I was like, well, all right. I'll show just you, buddy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, there there is a lot uh, that I've been hearing so far th- uh, that points to uh, unique things about anyone can wear the mask. Uh, what would you say is one of the more unique things? Um, I think about to me, this game? I I really think it's going back to that fundamental truth of the game. I think the idea that the hero always wins like makes it stand out among a lot of other superhero games. Mm-hmm. A lot of other games, I mean, and 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 there's kind of a, a reason for this because, you know, every superhero game is chasing after a very different kind of drama and a lot of them are chasing after different superhero stories. Yeah. Masks has character, like opens it up that you can fail because it's a story about, you know, self-discovery and finding out who you are in the world and failure is part of that, right? Like uh, games like... Uh, there are games that I, I could reference other games here, but they're games I don't like and I don't want to be mean. <laughs> I, um, but like there are ga- like um, trying to think of another superhero game like Masks is Masks to me. Is the Heroes game Unlimited. We, we can joke on Heroes Unlimited if we want to. I mean, Heroes that's fine. Un- Heroes Unlimited try like includes a ton of like failure conditions because it is a game written before people realize that you didn't have to include that. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's and, a lot in that I, game that doesn't need to be there. <laughs> that's correct. Um, but like a lot of uh, the thing that I wanted was um, the, the the reference point that I have is there is a web comic that came out when I was in college. I'm dating myself here. A comic called Dr. McNinja by Chris Hastings. Mm. It includes a single ish, a single page strip. From a character called the B man and he was a Batman riff and it's a single page comic and it it's it's one that I think about a lot in current in terms of superhero context. It is some guys break into a bank and start to rob it. B man jumps down from the ceiling in like jumps down from the sky lamp and there's the big cool shot of him falling and his cape is flapping and the guards are shooting or the robbers are shooting their gun. And the last panel is just a dead body flopping on the floor. (laughs) And that's it. That's the strip. <laughs> and like, I I think about that so often. And I think that is in a lot of ways, the thing that I didn't want in this game. Mm. And it's because like, that's not, that's not a superhero story, right? Like that's mm-hmm. not a story we you know. E- like, and, and having it be a Batman motif is very appropriate. And in a lot of ways, <laughs> this game is also my answer to the quest, to the, to the comment well, Batman's much more interesting than Superman because we honestly don't know if he's going to survive when he fights his enemies. And I'm like, really? We we don't know that? <laughs> you you pick up a Batman comic and you go, well, he might die. I might. This might be the oh, oh, this might be it. He might just die here. <laughs> and like we know the superhero is going to win because we're reading a superhero book with a superhero's yeah. name in big block letters on the cover. And, and, and I, if they do die, they come back. And that, and that's a big and it's a big deal, right? Like it says yeah. on the cover, this guy's going to die today, right? Yeah. Like the death of Superman is written in giant letter, giant letters on the on the cover. It says the death of Superman. Like yeah. We know that's going to happen. And like that is something that like I just wasn't <laughs> it's it's I wanted to make a game where that wasn't an option because like yeah. it's not true to what a superhero comic is. And that to me is what makes the game really unique is it is a game that kind of says you're going to win because you're a freaking superhero and superheroes win like you are someone that is going to save the day. Mm -hmm. There's drama that will come from that. But you're but but we're not worried about you finding a way to stop this bank robbery because you're going to stop this bank robbery. That's not the question. Absolutely. Absolutely. We usually talk about the history of the game. I want to talk a little bit about the fact that it's a hack of Beyond the Rift, or at least that it kind of started that way. I don't really know anything about that game, 
So can you talk a little mm-hmm. bit about what it is and how this oh, came sure. to be from that? Uh, absolutely. Um, so this is a pretty this is a pretty direct hack of the game Beyond the Rift, um, which is a, a game that I genuinely love and I really can't recommend uh, that you that you pick up if you've not read it or played it. Like I think it's a beautiful, wonderful game. Um, it is a game that sort of is designed to create uh, stories along the line of metroidvania or more specifically like hollow knight style uh Ooh. like platforming side scrolling games a lot of the a lot of the mechanics for this come directly from beyond the rift um and sort of the history of it is that i played that game with the designer d pennyway like i played it with d uh on party of one like uh they brought the game they were like i think this would be an awesome fit for the show and i was like hell yeah let's play it and they like we sat down together and played it and the whole and a I was captivated like it's one of my favorite party of one episodes and B I remember playing it and be and in the back of my mind I'm playing through it and I'm like this is a superhero game this is a superhero <laughs> game like like I remember like thinking through the mechanics going like oh this might be a superhero game oh there's a superhero game like in here I need to make this into a superhero game and after, yeah. as soon as we ended the recording like we hopped off like we hit stop on audacity and I looked at D and I was like can I make this into a superhero game? And they were, they, they, their exact response was, please make this into a superhero (laughs) game. And so here we are. Like it is a beautiful, like a beautiful, beautiful game. And it's so interestingly done. And it, it, in the way that like that idea that the hero always succeeds is also present in beyond the rift, but it takes a very different context Mm-hmm. where instead of being like you are all you are going to succeed what it is it, or, and something might go wrong uh what it is is you roll a six-sided dice and it says and and the side dice tells you not whether or not you succeed but how much you have to fail before you find the opportunity to succeed because it is sort mm. of a fantastical context where like you if you die you kind of reappear back where you were like you'll reincarnate or you'll kind of start over again or you will like have an opportunity to overcome that obstacle again and interesting in the way that and it's designed it's designed that way because it specifically is invoking playing a game like metroid yeah where you come up to an obstacle you try one way you die yeah you come back to that same stage you die Yep. And you have to figure out, OK, this enemy is going to shoot every two seconds. They're going to shoot a laser beam over my head. If I jump, they're going to shoot me with that laser beam and I'm going to die. So I have to go down low, roll, get close to them, drop a mine on them and roll back. Because if I don't roll back, the mine is going to explode and get me with it. So it's it's a game that is designed to te- to create the tabletop equivalent of that story where you're playing a Metroidvania game. And you're slowly like figuring out the rhythms of the monsters and figuring out the obstacles and the pits that you have to jump over. Mm -hmm. And the the mapping aspect is the exact same thing. It's what is the the coolest part of playing a Metroid game. It's watching that level, that level map slowly fill in. Mm -hmm. And it's whenever you find that new room, it appears somewhere else on the map. And you're like, I have to go back that way to like get to this other room. And there's cards that interact with each other to create that experience of now I've got a double jump and I can get to this level I couldn't get to before. Oh, wow. I really love Beyond the Rift. And like, I I, people are so smart with their game design. Like, (laughs) like, you know, I mean, I know we just talked about that whole process of like seeing people try and fail and try something new, you know, but like it still blows my mind sometimes like the experiences that we can simulate in tabletop. It's, it's and like the, mm-hmm. the mind blowing way people's brains work to just be like, mm, what if I tried to do this whole other thing? Yeah. Like, Oh, now we use cards. Like now we use a Jenga tower. Now I can simulate this experience. You know, like it just, it's, God, it's mind blowing. It's just absolutely it's, mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> it is the most it is the most beautiful like I every time I every time I run into something like this, it is the most beautiful thing in the world to me because like every single time I can look at it and go, this is something that this person knows so well that they literally just took like completely like sideways mechanics and were like this and and find a way to completely like when I played Beyond the Rift, like, you know, like D really likes hollow Knight. like i've talked mm. to them about it they've talked to me about it they've tweeted about it like they 
know Hollow Knight like the back of their hands. And so much of this game is creating a Hollow Knight game. And reading through it, you're like, yeah, they get it. Like every single one of these is is a moment where they're like, this is Hollow Knight. Like this is what's going to happen at this point in the story. And I've got it worked out. That goes back to that whole like people just having their thing that they're specialized in of like, this is my like tiny little window, but I know everything about it. And I just love that. Like it makes me so happy. (laughs) In that window, I'm going to create the most beautiful representation of this thing. Mm. And sure enough, like D brought me D brought onto my show their their Hollow Knight game. And I sat back and I was like, super. What about Superman, though? What about <laughs> Superman? And it turns out to have created another beautiful game from the same set of mechanics. And yeah, so, oh, my goodness, like, uh, honestly, like once you have played and read Anyone Can Wear the Mask and you've you've bought it at jeffstormer.itch.io slash mask. Uh, go also buy Beyond the Rift by Deep Anyway, because like it's so beautifully written and like the design on it is it, it is a gorgeous looking game. It is designed as a browser app. It is it's beautiful oh. and I love it. And I just want to talk about Beyond the Rift yeah. all day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you, you you absolutely tickled the the nostalgia portion of my brain uh, that has the the original Metroid for the NES map mm-hmm. seared into it. Uh, from the multiple play sessions oh yeah and like and 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 really specifically ryan i want you right now to think about like think about that moment when you're playing it and you get the double jump for the first time yeah and suddenly there's that one part of the map that's on the far side of the screen and you're like oh i can jump there now yeah like you see that 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 tiny little like crevice Mm -hmm. that you're like I can jump. I you you spent like an hour jumping, and you're like, maybe if I climb up here, I can't quite land it. Mm-hmm. Maybe if I maybe if I do a running jump, I can't quite get there. And then you get that double jump, and you go, yeah, oh, I can double jump that. It, it's so much easier than the the landmine trick where you go and yeah. bounce and time your mind just perfect, so you keep going higher and higher yep. and higher. And, and then if you, you get miss that one, ability, you- and you're like, oh. Oh, this is easy. This is now. how it's, this is how it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's it, it 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 captures that feeling and it captures oh. it captures also that kind of like uh beautiful bittersweet frustration of like I'm here now. I yeah. have the double jump. It took me 47 tries. I'm tired. I'm I'm frustrated, <laughs> but I have it now. And like yeah. This has been my beyond. This has been my TED talk on why I love the game Beyond the Rift by Deep Anyway. <laughs> Please go buy it. Absolutely. <laughs> um. So at this point in the episode, we normally cover basic terms and concepts that we need to know before we start creating characters. But we've kind of already gone over the the three roles: uh, yes, the hero, indeed. the city, and the villain. Um, is there any other sort of uh, terms or, or concepts that we'll need to know before we we dive into this? Um, not really. Um, there were there there might there would be a few terms that would come up in play, but nothing that's going to come up in our character creation process. OK, wonderful. So uh, shall we go ahead and uh, make some people and a city? Let's, let's, do, let's it. do it. I'm all about it. All right. All right. Let's and make some people. Let's make some people and a place. Let's make a place. Yeah, in the interest of being fair, I did grab playing cards and dice, and I do have my iPad here, so oh, you're, you're I can do any of there. the things. All right, so uh, the first thing that we need to decide is who is going to be playing which role. We've got our hero, our villain, our city. We have an idea of um, what each role uh, constitutes. I know, Ryan, you had a specific preference. Well... I, and I, I will I will be kind if you would like to be the villain. <laughs> so I was thinking I wanted to go against type uh, for the episode because I did two two series in a row where I was a magical girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would be very tempted to make another one if I was the hero. Um, however, um, going against type would make me a villain. Mm-hmm. But I am absolutely open to any other roles uh, at this point because I've got a an interesting thought in mind if I were the hero as well. Uh, that is not a magical girl. Okay, I was going to say, that was where I was going to draw the line. Three in a row is too much. Too I know, much. it's fine. Too much. I know, it's fine. It's fine. Um, 
Amelia, do you have a preference between the hero and the city? Um, or, or the villain. I mean, the villain. I, I'm I'm keeping that on the table for it's on the whoever. table. But I think that like if you're gonna if you're gonna be the bigger person and not be a magical girl, I will be the bigger person and not play the villain this time. <laughs> All right, fair. Um, so I think I might want to be the hero. Okay, I, oh, I love I love playing the city. Making ordinary places is one of my favorite things in the world to do. Wonderful. So I will be the villain then. Okay. All right. I will. So the first thing that we're going to do, um, I know we, we we traditionally sort of go through a round robin style, but um, I think that the way the best sort of represent that with the game that we have is the, uh, an interesting thing about the game. Going back to the question of what makes this game unique from a character creation standpoint is uh, you don't do it all at once. Like character creation and the world building of it is very specifically kind of parceled out through each of the different like moments in play. There's moments at every kind of step of the way that we ask key questions that really tell us who our characters are. So I think the best thing to do is going to be like each of us do one of those phases and then that'll kind of walk us through the game. This is going to be technically the world's fastest actual play of anyone can wear the mask is what's about to <laughs> unfold here. Yeah, I'm pretty excited because we only ever get to make characters. And I think that this is going to be like the closest we've come to actually playing mm. a game yeah. on our show. So I'm pretty we, we excited for almost, this. Yeah, we almost played um, one last job, I think it was. Um or something like that uh, on our mini, mini episodes. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, series 19. Uh, but we, we fudged so much and we didn't actually play it. Yeah, that's fair. We just pretended uh, we'll, to play it. We'll do, we'll do about the same here. Um, so we'll start by answering a few questions to give us an idea of who our hero is. Oh boy. Because how part of how the game works is we can't really know the other pieces of the puzzle until we kind of know who our hero is. Sure. So uh, the first question, so I've got a few questions to ask our hero. The first question is, how powerful are you? Uh, I've, we've got some options. Uh, you can you can create your own answer, but some example options are like a street level vigilante, mm -hmm. a friendly neighborhood hero, a la Spider-Man or maybe Daredevil, uh, mm -hmm. someone gifted with great power, which is sort of more of like a Flash or a Green Lantern or an Iron Man or someone who is a living god, which is your Supermans and your Thors and your 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 quite literal gods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. Because this kind of sets the tone for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It gives it really us an does. idea of like what threats we're gonna throw at you, what sorts of places you're gonna visit, the the size of everything. It sets a lot of like the tone of the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Ryan. What do you think? Kind of level do you want to play at? I don't think I want to go uh, on the extreme ends. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go like basic vigilante or like super god mm -hmm. type individual. Um, so somewhere in the middle. Let's go really like one lower than god. I think, okay. yeah, gifted with great power sounds really, really interesting. Yeah. Or cool. in the case I'm, of Iron Man, great money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sometimes that is exactly what that means. Exactly. Um, the next question, and I can kind of I'll talk I'll peel back the curtain a little bit and talk about like what this is setting up is where do your powers come from? Mm. Are they science, magic, technology, ancestry? Who even knows or powers? What powers? Uh, this kind of sets up the uh, if the first question is kind of setting up the tone of the game, this is kind of coloring in the the sort of the palette a little bit like. You know, if we know your character is a magic is a magic user, we're going to we're going to know to include magical locations. If we if your character is a tech character, we're going to have techie things like in the first the first one sets scale. This kind of sets the like the color and the tone of the game. Mm. Okay. Um, Blood magic. <laughs> no, no. I'm the hero, Ryan, not the no. villain. <laughs> you you use good blood. Good blood, yes. Wait. Yes. Only <laughs> only that good blood. Um Ooh. I don't I feel like I like magic. Magic works. Magic is cool. Mm hmm Not a magical girl though. No. Doesn't have to be. And which which segues nicely into our next question of like, what exactly do you do? What are what are and this is this is one of those things that will color in more specifically in play mm -hmm. when we get to our later segments. But it's helpful to have kind of a picture of like 
the 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 sort of uh, like paint colors that you're painting with. It's helpful um, that as I uh, read from the game, if you're at a loss for ideas, you can always borrow some powers from your favorite superhero, use a playbook or tables from your favorite superhero RPG, or leave this intentionally vague and come up with powers later. Mm-hmm. Um. So this is like what what is your like main like thing that you do? Is that yeah yeah? Okay. What is your what is your superhero shtick? Cool. Um, I feel like I want it to be like teleportation. Mostly. Ooh. Teleportation is cool. Especially with magic, because then you're opening up like magical portals and things, and that's like a dope visual. Yeah. yeah. It's very good. All right. So we've we now we've got an idea of who this character is. And now the fourth question uh has a mechanical thing tied to it, but how do you help your city? Are you the hand of the people protecting them so they can thrive? Are you an icon that they look up to for inspiration? Are you the smiling face and friend to those who need it? Or are you the dark knight that avenges the injustice that they suffer? I love this so much. I don't try not to be me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're not going to go with vengeance. Um, sorry. What was the first one? Uh, the hand of the people protecting them so they can thrive, which is v- kind of in line with a, uh, th- the, the, the pop culture reference points that I couldn't put in the game because of uh, like, you know, copyright law are like <laughs> it's like a Luke Cage or mm-hmm. a daredevil or mm. somebody who is like, you know, who is like watching out for their neighborhood and yeah. is like the person that's like it's not they're not going for vengeance, but they're 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 offering protect like active protection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I don't think that's it either. And then the other reference points for the 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 I options are like your your icon is is like Superman, right? You're the you're the person smiling on the rooftop that everybody points at, mm-hmm. or you're a Spider Man, which is every year you're you're the person that sits next to you after when the, when they save the day and eats a burger with you, or you're the Batman. You're the you're the you're Justice the Knight. Yeah. No, I think I'm definitely more like I'm I'm leaning more toward the like Spider Man. Like we can we can chill and hang out. I love it. It's it's mm. it's 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 a good option. I mean, you can't go wrong with a, with a friendly Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And really, like, that's all we have about our hero. We could have names and pronouns, but like also, you know, we played games where we that's kind of appeared in play. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. so that's kind of the opening phase of the game with our hero. Cool. So what uh, what suit uh, does that equivalent oh. to? So um, what that represents in play is your strong suit is hearts. And what a strong suit is, is when I flip as the city, when I flip a playing card, if I flip the if I flip a heart card, uh, the villain is going to roll three dice and tell me the highest result when it comes time to tell us how well you you did at saving the day. Oh, when you flip it, when you flip a diamond. Or when I flip a diamond, the villain is going to roll two dice. And when I flip a club or spade, the villain is going to roll one dice. Interesting. And that translates more specifically to you've got your neighborhood, your your place where you are most comfortable, your place of power. And then in the city, there are areas where you are a little less familiar and there's areas where you're out of your element for some reason or another. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, now that we know our hero, we'll answer some city questions. Um, the city is everyone else, as we've talked about. And so uh, we only have a few questions. Um, the first question is, how large is our city? Um, I'm kind of feeling like this might be like a borough. Like this might be like a section of a larger metropolis city, but this might be like a smaller district of it. OK, unless anyone has any other strong feelings about it i like that yeah i like that too cool i I like the options on this uh that it doesn't limit you to a city or just the world one of the options is to infinity and beyond and uh i I just like that you have that that in there because goodness it's limitless well and it is and 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 part of the reason that i included that was um, so there's the, the, the options I'll read them off. The options are small town, bustling borough, a major metropolis, the whole wide world and to infinity and beyond. And the reason that I included that is there's a very specific character that I love that I've referenced already that like, like Thor 
technically his city is a million different planets. Yeah. Yeah. But his stories are very much still like something is threatening something in my domain. I have to go like step up and defend it. Mm -hmm. So and and the other I mean, the other the other example that I love dearly that we talked about before we got on mic Goku fits perfectly into this, right? Like there's the entire <laughs> cosmos and Goku is like Lord Frieza is threatening a planet three galaxies away. I got to go beat that guy up. And it's that idea that like you the city represents the city is the place that you defend, right? It is mm. it is the location that you are the defender of. And yeah. there are Superman stories where his his city is metropolis there are also superman stories where his city is the entire cosmos yeah and i wanted those both to be kind of options that's awesome and the other half of character initial character creation for our city is i'm going to create four districts these are four subsections of the city that when i flip a card will give us an immediate idea of the visuals that are tied to the where we are it it, it makes it a little easier when we're drawing cards to come up with locations once we have an idea uh the example that i have in the book is that kirby city is broken up into morrison square park uh simone county community college mcduffiesburg which is a residential district and the jazzy tech district of giffen alley mm. so I want to say this borough, I want to lean into magic a little bit and say like the larger borough is sort of like the historical district of uh, we'll go with Kirby City again because it's in the book and it's there a you know. comic book reference that I love. Yeah, um, this is like old Kirby City, right? Like this is the historical district. This has been around for hundreds of years. The there is history to the architecture and with that history comes magic. Like there is magic woven into the walls and into the yeah. geometry of the city. And like it is bustling with magic. And I think that 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 creates this experience where like your magical character kind of fits into that. So I want to throw in and this is a this is a piece of the game where if anyone has thoughts on like a section of a, of a historical borough that they would like to see, like we can we can th collectively throw out ideas. Mm. I want to throw out that there's definitely like a historical battlefield like this city Ooh. was like a revolutionary war battle site or some or like a, a similarly old battle took place here. So there's a section of of old Kirby City that is like buildings that have been left in ruin to preserve the his like the history of them. And it's almost like a walking outdoor museum, right? Like it's kind of it's called like the Battlefield Museum. And okay. it's buildings that have been kind of half leveled and spaces where you can see a floor plan mapped out on the ground. And it's like the site of a historical battle. OK, so there's definitely ghosts is what I'm getting for sure. There, that area is <laughs> super haunted, <laughs> super haunted. <laughs> Does anyone else have any thoughts on a section? I, I wanted something with books, um, either a library, a bookstore. Or like um, an archive. I would uh, love I mean, I would love a metropolitan library like the city library, like the huge, big central library hub of the entire mm -hmm. city. Yeah, I, th with, I think that would be really fun with those archives that you could just get lost in for days. Like that's a, there's a lot of cool potential there. It has like really neat architecture. though. No, oh, it's beautiful. It's it's that kind of architecture that you that like you see and you're like. This is this is possibly built as some sort of magical ritual. Like yeah. the the floor plan has to be laid out in some kind of some kind of weird right, way. Right. This definitely and aligns with some constellation somewhere. Yeah. There's there's absolutely some like catacombs oh, underneath for sure. that that are for like sure. for like super old book storage that they they modified it into and there's even areas that nobody's really been to in hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rooms nobody has the keys for anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's a there's like a main not quite. a it, it was when Kirby City was only this tiny like borough. There's what was a main street and is now like a shopping district mm. that is all like little boutique uh, bespoke. Like it's 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 like the outdoor, you know, you walk you walk around outside, you go you window shop like it's kind of the quaint 
it's a little touristy, right? Like regulars yeah. in the city don't really hang out there, but like yeah. it's like the cute shopping district. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is this where like the farmer market uh like yeah, pops definitely. up every every week during the summer? Definitely. Awesome. Do we have one more suggestion for like a district in our little borough? Something that we would like to see in here. Um, what are we missing here? I don't know. We have a lot of like nice maybe like houses sort of like- where people live. Yeah, oh, I guess people do probably live somewhere in this city. <laughs> like, and I'm thinking like specifically, I have a pitch for like the actual like residential sections of the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think they clash a little bit with the rest of the neighborhood because a lot of the houses have been rebuilt. And like it is a place where the larger city has kind of bled into it. So you get this very specific kind of modern city contrast. Uh, This is me thinking of the city outside of my door, Philadelphia. Uh, There are houses that have been like knocked down or burned down or they just have been replaced. So you have these very beautiful historical buildings next to these very kind of jarring modern architecture designs. And it's well, I this think kind that of especially makes sense if you have like a lot of ruined buildings from whatever battle there was or yeah. something like that. These have kind yeah. of been rebuilt up around that and like are clearly way more modern. It's, than It's this kind of place where the city is sort of bleeding into the historical city, right? Like, it's yeah. mm-hmm. cool. So and those they clearly are haven't figured districts. out all the zoning. and yeah. I- I, I want to add a, a small detail to that. Like the, the lot lines haven't changed in, you know, centuries, uh, so to speak, because they're set up in such a way that uh, creates like, you know, magical. I love that. Something or another's right. And so uh, the last piece of this is uh, we throw to a question of we throw to a question uh, for the hero. Um, where are you most comfortable in this, in this district? What is your kind of home turf, their place of power? Oh, um, I mean, I feel like it's probably the library. That was what I was thinking. Cause so you know, library, that's probably where my magic is the strongest. <laughs> so the library becomes your strong suit, which, so if we flip a heart, it's going to be somewhere in or around the library. Um, nice. I'm going to posit that probably the battlefield district is probably, uh, your second most comfortable locale, which will be the suit of diamonds. Mm-hmm. And then the suits of clubs and spades are the uh, I'm going to say spades is our uh, residential area and our marketplace is clubs. So if I so depending on the card that I flip, those are that'll that'll give us an initial prompt for where we are and will allow us to more easily kind of create a location in play. Cool. And with that, we throw to our villain. Mm. Thanks for joining us for the start of this remarkable series, everyone. Next episode, we actually get to play a round of the game, which was an absolute delight. Not a thing we get to do very often. No. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, in our call to action today, we would like to remind you that this Tuesday, January 5th, 2021, marks the Georgia runoff election for both Senate seats. This basically determines the Senate majority and greatly impacts the next two years here in the United States. Mm -hmm. So it is extremely important. Um, If you are eligible to vote and registered already, um, please go out there and vote. Every little bit will count in this runoff. Absolutely. Um, Next up, we have a reminder to check out my Chimera stream this coming Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time at twitch.chimera.games and join us for some magical girl eldritch horror as we try to make heads and tails of what happened last episode. Uh, So it's going to be a fun time. Speaking of fun times, we have a review, our last Mm -hmm. one. Our last review. very exciting. I don't know if everybody is ready for this intense review. (laughs) It's so good. It's very exciting. This one is from Bert Bert 612 from the United States of America on iTunes. It's titled Good Podcast. It reads informative. Thank you. Yes. That is like a yeah. <laughs> succinct. No, ser- um, uh, it is everything that we weren't in that cold open. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was very succinct. Um, honestly, though, uh, more reviews like that are fine because if you don't have the spoons to type out exactly what you think, 
um, and and have multiple paragraphs or anything like that, just just throw a five star review out there and say, hey, informative. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, Whatever. that's true, though, because I think there have been a lot of times where I'm like, I want to leave a review for this podcast, but I don't even know where to begin because yeah. like, I really love it and it's great. And like, totally. Like yeah. I said, you know, like you... we said before, you can say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long and as you know what? Five stars. Uh, and you know what's really cool is you can leave a review now. And it's just a word or two mm -hmm. and come back later when you do have the spoons to do it and and edit it. If you like, you don't even have to do that. But Leaving that review absolutely helps us out. Um, and, you know, since this is the last review that we had in our bucket, um, we're all out of reviews now. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Apple Podcasts helps the most. I know it's the most inconvenient for a lot of folks, but um, it really Apple does help the most. I hate it. <laughs> I know. I know. It's awful. Every time you open that program, it needs to update. Exactly. Why? Yeah. Why? And well, it doesn't get any better. No. Yeah, so what I, are the updates for, Ryan? It, from what I understand, it's to support new Apple devices that we don't have. Okay. So, okay. hooray. Uh, but, you know, also uh, Stitcher, Podchaser, uh, others out there, uh, just go ahead and leave a review where you can, and uh, we'll get to it. Uh, for now, though, uh, we're going to be closing out the episode. Uh, bid you all adieu and hope to see you back here next week for the continuation of our Anyone Can Wear the Mask series. Until then, uh, take care, stay safe, stay home, vote if you live in Georgia, uh, drink water, get sleep, mm -hmm. pet your pets, uh, all of those things. <laughs> Have a, an excellent 2021. Thank mm. you for starting the year with us. And we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, Check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like A Woman with Hollow Eyes. A Woman with Hollow Eyes is a podcast adaptation of One Shot's live stream dramatic Invisible Sun actual play. Discover a world of magic secrets, and supernatural civic disputes in our unique take on Saturine. In the first season, James D'Amato, Cat Cool, and SNL writer Alan Linnick are led on a mind-bending adventure by GM Darcy Ross. Even if you already saw the streams, you want to listen to this podcast for the incredible soundtrack composed and edited by Will Levendahl. 
Get it by searching for A Woman with Hollow Eyes or Darcy Ross on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app.